Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the Cordial Media YouTube channel. My name is Adriana and I run the Pinterest marketing agency Cordial Media where we offer do it for you services when it comes to your Pinterest marketing strategies. In today's video, I am going to show you the exact way that I like to set up consideration campaigns, conversion campaigns, and catalog sales shopping campaigns on Pinterest. These are all three cold campaigns. So the, the point of these campaigns is to go and capture a new audience and not to retarget an old audience, but it's done in a way that will make you understand where to allocate your budget based on how much you have. It'll also make you understand which types of campaigns you should be running at which point in time, depending on your type of business and how advanced you are in your business. And you're overall going to just learn the tips and tricks that I know when it comes to running promoted pins on Pinterest. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit the big red subscribe button and to hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video here on the Cordial Media YouTube channel. As well, give this video a like and let me know in the comments if you also set up your campaigns the same way or if I taught you something new. Without further ado, let's dive in to the video. Let's set up a Kohl's consideration campaign. So a consideration campaign is the new name for a traffic campaign. And the goal of a traffic campaign is to get traffic, of course, to your website. So you're looking at click through rate, you're looking at outbound clicks, and you're setting up the campaign in a way that will get you those eyeballs to your website. So to do that, you wanna log into your Pinterest account. You're gonna click ads over here. You're gonna create an ad and you're just going to get started. You're gonna start with the name. So I always start with the date and then I remove the time because that's not necessary. And then I, I keep this consideration formally traffic. And then usually I will add how many ad groups you have. Let's say we do three ad groups. Then over here you wanna pick the campaign budget type. Always pick daily, don't pick lifetime because it will spend your lifetime budget really quickly. So pick daily and let's say like you want the campaign to end at a certain point, you can just put an end date, you know, but as long as you have a daily budget, that's what you wanna stick with. So $15 a day works. Um, it's a little low, so you wanna think like for each ad group, you should look at having between five and $10. I guess you can get away with 15. Um, if you're gonna have three ad groups, maybe you wanna play with a bigger budget. So let's say we go for a $25 a day uh, budget. Now this is Canadian because I'm in Canada, but for you, it'll say your currency. Next, it says run continuously or run on specific dates. So you can choose, like I said, an end date for your campaign. I'm just going to choose to run it continuously. And then I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And here comes the very first ad group. So again, with the name, I like to keep the date and then I keep the, and then it says ad group. So I'm going to remove that. I like to say that it's a consideration again. And then I'm going to see what I'm going to test. So because we have three ad groups, we have room to play with what we want. So let's say we're going to do one with keywords. We'll do, I'm going to duplicate the ad group and do one with interests only. Maybe you're wondering, why aren't you adding interests and keywords in the same ad group? And you can, you absolutely can. I like to have a bigger budget for that though, first of all, than just $15 a day divided by three ad groups. I like to have a bigger budget. It would be something like $15 for one ad group alone would be good. Um, reason being is that usually if you merge the interest and the keywords together, the keywords help guide the campaign as to where to place you in the algorithm. However, the interests take up most of the budget. So if you really want to see whether the keywords can outperform the interests, then that's when you would separate them. And then let's say like the third ad group, we can just do, let's say like we decide to, we can test a pre-existing audience of some sort. So now let's go back to the first ad group keywords to decide the keywords that this is based on your product. This is based on what you want to drive traffic to. The keywords are based on like what you're advertising. So let me select choose my own and I'm going to go down to the keywords. You want to keep enable expanded targeting um, because it just helps with propelling your pin to finding its audience, your pins to find their audience, your campaign. So keep that on. Um, these are just so the keywords over here. It says to add a minimum of 25, but I like to add like up to 100, especially if the keywords, if the ad group is keywords only um, and it doesn't have the help of the interest. So this is when you would do your keyword research. And I have a full video on how to do keyword research that you can check out in the description box below. But essentially you wanna look at what you're promoting and then you wanna create, you wanna collect all the keywords related to what you're promoting, okay? So let's say I'm promoting a sh shoes we would type shoes um 
some sandals, slippers, let's say, and you would just collect all the keywords. So I've only got three. And you see based on the keywords, it changes the audience size. Now, ideally, you want to be like in the mid range to the higher range, just so um, Pinterest can have enough space to find its audience on the platform. So you want to really collect amazing keywords and try to make it you know, up to like a hundred really, uh, keywords that don't be scared of saying a hundred keywords and adding those in. You can delete them. You can add them, add new ones in. you can, you know, optimize further. And I will have a video on how to optimize, but for now, stick to your hundred keywords. Okay. And then with the demographics, so unless your product is like hyper, hyper specific to a certain niche, you want to I'll leave all of this selected to all, all gender, all ages, all Canada locations. So if you're in the US, it'll say all US locations, um, all languages, all devices. Don't really touch this. It's not necessary unless your product is really exclusively for a specific niche. So let's say like your product is only for people 50 and older, then you would go ahead and, you know, remove the ages that are not appropriate for that. Okay. But for now, Let's just keep it general. And then this don't touch, like you wanna just keep that as is, all is always best. When it comes to optimization and delivery, you wanna keep it automatic as well. Um, especially with consideration campaigns, you might wanna make it uh, different for conversion campaigns, but we'll cover that shortly. And then you wanna choose your creative. So for every ad group, you wanna have a, between two and four creatives. They should respect the Pinterest best practices. I will do a video on that as well in the series. Um, and yeah, they should ideally be different creators for every ad group. Like don't use the same ones for each ad group because then you can't test as much stuff. So I like to select like three of the ones that I want. So I'll choose these three. And there you go. That's one ad group for keywords. Now let's go to the ad group for interests. So down here, I'm gonna select choose my own. After the interests, you're going to click down here and you're going to start adding the interest. So again, this depends on your product, but let's say like, we're going to stick with the shoes. We're going to go under fashion, you know, children's fashion. Maybe, um, you've got women's fashion over here. And what's great is that you can choose level one interest. The so level one interests are like these ones. And then level two interests are a bit more specific, a bit more narrow. So these are level two interests. Um, it will narrow down a bit like your audience size because you're not selecting everything. But what I like to do, especially if this is a new campaign, is to select the majority of the inches that I select. I like them to be level um, one because you're giving Pinterest the opportunity to really find its audience. So I'll select maybe three, four, five interests and I'll take it from there. So men's fashion, so if you sell like men's shoes, it's good too. Um, and then let's say like you don't have enough interest, you're not quite sure what to select, you can go under analytics and under audience insights. And under there, it'll show you like the interest of your engaged audience. So if you go over here, your engaged audience, it'll show you like what your, your, the, their interests are. See, like finance is a big category that's interesting to my ideal audience. So maybe this is a, an interest I would consider using within my campaign. And then if it doesn't work, well, then I can just move it you know, when we come to optimize. So there you go. We've got a few interests. These are the ones selected for now. Um, again, the demographics I leave to all for everything. Ad placement is the same. You don't really touch this automatic optimization and delivery. And then you want to select your pins once again. So let me select three different pins. I didn't touch upon this earlier, but the pins that you choose should be either standard or video. Don't mix video pins and standard pins in the same ad group. Keep them in separate ad groups, okay? Because video pins will take up all of the budget if they are in the same ad group. You can even go the extra step and just separate your ad groups into separate campaigns altogether to make sure that they're really being tested uh, for the platform versus your standard pins. Um, like that, your your standard pins don't get left behind. and. Uh, the video pins don't eat up your entire budget. So that's something to keep in mind too. So I have, I don't know how many I chose over here, but again, you have to select, it says three selected between two and four creators per ad group is ideal. And then when it comes to the last campaign, the last ad group for consideration with the audience, I'm going to choose reconnect with users. 
uh, site visitors use existing lists. So this, these are lists that I've created. Some are too small to use, but this one isn't. So let me select it. And then I would add selected lists. And then I would go ahead and keep everything the same again. Choose my creatives again. One, two, three, let's say. And there you go. I would click publish and it would launch this campaign. And now you start monitoring, you know, in a matter of leave the campaign be for about two weeks, and then you can take a look and see if things are ready to start getting optimized. How to set up a conversion campaign. Let's dive into it. So I'm going to start by clicking. First of all, when you log into your Pinterest account, you're going to go under ads and create ad and then it'll show up here. Then you're going to go under conversions and you are going to scroll down and you're going to start with the name. So the name, I like to do date, conversions, and then the number of ad groups that are going to be in here. Let's say for the sake of this example, we'll, we'll just do one ad group. I'm going to pause it for the sake of like not launching it by accident, but they've released campaign budgeting, which means all conversion campaigns will be transitioning, transition to campaign budget beginning on September First, that means that the campaign manages the budget and will push the budget towards the most successful ad group as opposed to having each ad group have its own budget. So this could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, but for now it's it's fine. Something to note is that you actually charge per thousand impressions. So it, it makes it a bit more expensive. The conversion campaigns are more expensive than the consideration, but definitely worth doing if you're getting at cards already and if you're definitely if you're getting checkouts. So now for let's establish a daily budget for the campaign. Honestly, I like to work with a budget of at least $20 per campaign. Let's do 25 for the sake of this example. Um, but yeah, then you can choose to have it run on specific days or run continuously. That's completely up to you. Over here, we have said ad group. Now we have to decide, um, this is also a cold campaign, by the way. So we're going to choose our own targeting, but we need to decide are the interesting keywords. So I like to add in over here, interests and keywords. Now let's say like you wanted to test two ad groups. You could test like the same ad group with the same interesting keywords, but like just switch up the creative. So like one would have video, one ad group would have video and the other ad group would have standard pins um, to see if like video would outperform standard pins or vice versa. Again, you can test like different audiences against each other. You can test intros versus keywords with the same creative. You have so many options here, but at the end of the day, you need to decide what your campaign is going to optimize towards. Do you, what checkout conversions you want? A lead, a sign up, an ad card, or a checkout. Now, every e-commerce store is going to tell me, I want to check out. Of course you want to check out, but can your business get checkouts from Pinterest at this point in time? It depends on your conversion insights. So let's open those up. And what you want to look at in the conversion insights is how many add to carts you're getting in a day. So over here, mine doesn't have it, but for e-commerce stores, usually it will say over here like add to cart. And if it says like 50 in a day minima, then you can optimize for add to carts. If it says checkouts less than 50 in a day, then don't choose checkouts, choose add to carts. Um, but if you're already getting over 50 checkouts daily, then you can go right ahead and create campaigns that optimize for checkout. Okay. Very important to keep in mind. It, let's say you don't have 50 add to carts. You need to work on traffic back to conversion. So, okay. So let's say we're getting, we're not getting the 50 checkouts a day. We're getting 50 add to carts. Let's choose 50 add to carts. And then we would choose again, like the creative I'll, I'll choose like four, let's say. Now, these are not the most optimal for, for running campaigns. You always want your creative to be like this um, and follow the Pinterest best practices. So they should be vertical. They should respect the two to three dimensions, you know, and things like that. So just make sure that you always have uh, vertical images. Now, I just selected four for the sake of this example, but you get the point. So over here, I've got my four pins. I'm optimizing for for add to cart. I'm going to click automatic bidding. Although it's new, it is working pretty well for most of my client accounts. And if you like absolutely have a certain cost per conversion, you don't want to exceed, then you should do custom for sure. Um, 
and then we're not touching any of this. We've got, so we then, now that the interest, so it's the same thing like I showed you for the consideration campaign where you, you're just going to choose relevant interests for your product and um, maybe interests that you know your audience insights are revealing are interesting to them. And then you want to add keywords too if you're going to do interesting keywords. But you can add around the 30 keyword situation. You don't need 100 keywords because the keywords won't spend. They're just going to help the campaign find its audience through the interests. Okay, it just gives them an idea. So let's say like you have a Mother's Day gift that you're trying to promote, and the key you're you're finding the interest like um, women's fashion, let's say men's fashion or event planning. And then in your keywords, you would add something like Mother's Day gift, gifts for her, you know, like just to tell the campaign, to give the campaign an idea of exactly where it should find your audience on the platform. And then you're done. All you want to do is launch. So here's the publish button and that's it. Okay. Catalog sales, shopping campaigns. Let me walk you through how to set one up for your business. Now, before you really do set one up, you have to make sure that you have already synced your Shopify store with the Shopify app and you've installed your Pinterest tag. I have a full video tutorial on how to set up your Pinterest tag uh, that I will link in the description box below. But for now, once you've done that, you have your catalog set up, you can then go ahead and create a catalog sales campaign. So you're gonna click over here, catalog sales, and then you're gonna go and start setting up the name the name will be campaign name catalog sales now this is a cold shopping campaign which means that we're not going to discuss dynamic retargeting in today's video we will discuss it in a future video i'm just going to pause so it doesn't launch early access campaign budgeting you do want to check this off because it does help your campaign and then you're going to want to choose a daily budget so you can do something as low as 20 dollars up until 150 dollars if you wanted to and then you can schedule your ad uh, to run continuously or to run on specific days. So if you want like your ad to end, you can set that up here. Let's click continue. So we're only going to do one ad group um, because it's not necessary to do more than that. And we're going to look into what we're going to do. So the targeting, first of all, is going to be based off of an audience. Um, should we choose a product group? Yes, we should. So I'm just going to select all products and then shopping ad. Now the shopping ad versus the collection ad, really the collection ad, you need to have a hero creative. So you can choose to test that out if you'd like in a separate ad group. But I just stick with the shopping ad because the, usually the algorithm knows what to show to different Pinterest users. So you can also choose an audience if you'd like, but if you're going to go after cold traffic, then you can just go ahead and select um, specific targeting. Now, again, I like to choose nothing. I like to leave everything as all unless I have a hyper specific niche that I want to target. Um, but for now, I leave everything as all. And then as the campaign goes runs, um, I will then start to remove certain things and optimize them. But for now, just to launch the campaign, I just leave everything as all. Um, I will not choose a audience. So that's great. Ad group placement, always all. Enable expanded targeting, always a yes. And then over here, you're going to choose which conversion event you're going to go for. So add to cart or checkout. Now you want to go after add to carts if you have over 50 add to carts daily. And you want to go for checkout if you have over 50 checkouts daily. If you have less than 50 add to carts daily, then don't even run a catalog sales. Just go run a conversion campaign. Sorry, no, go run a, a consideration campaign because you need traffic at that point. And then the next thing you're gonna do is make sure that your ad group status is active, bidding is automatic, unless you need to you know, have a specific cost per conversion that you want, but automatic tends to work very, very well. And that's it, all you have to do is press save. Well, over here should say publish because I already published it, but publish and you're good to go. And then you can let your, your catalog sales uh, run for about two weeks before you really decide whether or not it's working or before you start optimizing. Um, and then you can take it from there. There you have it. If you need help with running your promoted pins, book a meeting with me below. It's completely free. We can chat about your Pinterest account and your ads and see if you and I are a good fit to work together. On that note, I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you in the next video of this series all about the Pinterest creative best practices when it comes to designing your pins for your ads. Have a lovely rest of your day, you guys. Bye.